Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium, and I do uh, videos on politics and also on all matter of spiritual things, right? I do videos on ghost and uh, crossing over ghost. I do videos on energy, protection, psychic, mediumship. We offer classes, um, and I'm going to New Orleans with Jen's World Throw. Uh, for my first ever event with her in New Orleans, which we still have a few tickets available for at jensworldtarot.com. Now, I want to talk to you today about something really important, actually. This is super, super important. Um, if you're a regular viewer, this will all make sense. Um, so I talk to my spirit guides um, all the time. I talk to them um, just basically I'm clairaudient, which means that I can hear. I'm claircognizant, which means I have clear knowing, clairvoyance, I can see. So, you know, many times when all of us, when we're asleep, we get downloads, we get dreams. Sometimes we get premonitions. Sometimes we're woken up in the middle of the night. We don't know why. Sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night and we see something or we hear something or we have a knowing about something that's happened, right? So this is what happened to me, not last night, but the night before. And I'm going to try to explain it to you in a very quick and succinct way because it's really important. Now I will say that I also have a Patreon channel that I haven't really advertised much, but this um, original video will be on Patreon. Now, the difference is that I have a tendency that when crazy things happen to me, spiritual crazy things happen to me, I will photograph it or I will do a voice recording with my phone. It's just a way to download it all in a, in a place where I can go back and listen to it because I thought that I would remember it. And even today, I thought, well, I know what happened. I'll just recreate it. I'll, I'll just tell everybody what happened. But I was able to get this hour-long recording off of my phone and to get it onto my computer. And I listened to it again. And I realized I didn't, I didn't remember one-tenth of what happened that night. I had no memory. It, it just was too much, right? So um, it's a good idea when you have uh, something that happens to you, to write it down immediately or to voice record it in your phone immediately because you're not gonna remember it. You're not gonna remember the whole thing and there's so many amazing details that I would have left out. So what is on my Patreon channel, which is a membership channel, is the entire actual voice recording of what happened, play by play as it happened, is all there in its raw format. <laughs> um, now, I realize that some people don't wanna pay 10 bucks a month and I get it, no problem. That's why I'm doing this video for you right now. I'm gonna do the Cliff Notes version of that video here on YouTube for free. Um, but if you're interested in joining my Patreon, it is in the description below, the link to it. It's 10 bucks a month and um, I have videos on there. I have basically tutorials on psychic abilities. I have a lot of videos on there and I'm going to be doing more videos on there specifically for the members. 10 bucks a month, it just supports me, it supports my channel. This is how I make my living. So it's, um, it's a way for me to pay my bills basically. Um, so if you're interested in that, check it out. Now for the recap, um, I, uh, man, it was, okay, so listen, this is what went down. I am clairaudient. Um, that means I hear things. Many of you are clairaudient too. You've heard your name called. That's clairaudient. Uh, you've heard music when there's no music. That's clairaudient. Now, as far as psychic abilities go, clairaudient is one of the more rare ones. Most people are clairsentient, which is clairfeeling, right? Um, clairvoyant, which is clairseeing, claircognizant, which is clairknowing. Those are way more common than clairaudience. Clairalliance is psychic smelling. Sometimes you smell cigarette smoke when there's nobody around, right? That's your relatives from the other side um, giving you a message that they're nearby. You may smell flowers. There's a lot of things that there's a lot of ways they can work with you. So what happened with me is that I've been having this thing happen that I haven't been able to deal, I haven't been able to 
figure it out, deal with it, take care of it. Um, if you watch me at all, you know that I have a dog that I love very much. She's my sidekick. She sees ghosts. She sees aliens. She sees things. Um, and ever so often, I mean once every, say, two weeks, that infrequent, I will be talking about my dog to someone, um, and or I'll be talking to her, and a voice inside my head will say something negative about my dog. And I mean mean, violent, vicious, like kick her, right? I've never kicked any dog, much less my dog. I would never, that's not my thought. If you're having thoughts or you're hearing things and you know it's not you, that's somebody else. You're not crazy, you're not schizophrenic. Now, if you're having thoughts that you wanna hurt somebody or harm somebody or harm yourself, please go see a professional. Please go see a psychiatrist, please. Okay, um, because I'm clear audience and I've heard so many voices in my life, I know that I'm not schizophrenic. Okay, I just I know that. Um, but if you don't have that awareness, please seek help. Okay, now I'm hearing this voice. Now again, I I I I address it. I'm like, who are you? Get out. You know, I try to find it. The minute I address it, it disappears. Okay. So it disappeared, like, not just in my house. Like, if it was in my house, I would find it. If it was in the yard, I could find it. If it was on my roof, I could find it. I could, I could feel its energy in my energy field. But this guy, it was a male, would disappear out of my existence, meaning to another dimension, like that. And he wouldn't show up again for weeks. And then he would show up and say something violent. And then he would disappear for weeks. It's been bugging me. And I've asked for help. I've asked for Archangel Michael. Look, I, I work with these energies all the time. I know you guys are going to tell me what to do in the comments. But believe me when I say I have a lot of experience in this. And if you're going to disappear out of my dimension, I can't, I can't do anything. Archangel Michael can't do anything. Okay? So this has been bothering me. So now, fast forward to the other night. Uh, I'm waking up about 2.12 in the morning. Interesting in itself. And um, I'm waking up and um, I'm really groggy. And I'm saying I, I, I need to call Ziggy. Ziggy is my, my spirit guide who's like my safety guy. He's um, very capable. He's like my Navy SEAL of the guardian angels or, or of my personal spirit guides. Um, he could take care of anything. I, I remember saying something about Ziggy as I was waking up. Um, and Ziggy appeared in my room and my bedroom instantly along with my other guide, Addie, um, um, who I think is a Pleiadian. Anyway, she doesn't do the dirty work. You know, she, it's not her thing, but Ziggy does. And they showed up in my room. And I remember saying, he's really bad. He's really bad. He's a bad one. Now, again, you can hear this whole thing over there on Patreon. But I remember saying he's really bad. And before I knew it, they had him. They had gotten him. They caught him. And it was a man. Um, and, they, and before I knew it, they were outside of the house. Okay? I don't know why. This is interesting. I don't know why they didn't just teleport him straight to wherever they needed to go. Why they stayed in the physical realm, I don't know. Um, as I'm talking to them now, I think it's because they, believe it or not, they're safer here. Because once they get up there, everybody knows uh, the energy signature. I mean, it's you know what I mean? Um, it's as if you're in Grand Central Station of energy, metaphysical energies. And they all can see you and know you, right? But down here, it's like being on a country road. Okay, if that makes sense. So they're out in front of the house. Um, they get out to the street, and the guy, this is very interesting, that guy that they captured, he tried to swipe at my foundation. So this is a 1940s cottage, and it's on pier and beam, which means I have these beams that hold the house up. And he tried to swipe the foundation of the house, but they stopped him. Now, I thought at the time, why is he trying to attack my house? I mean, that's weird. But what he was really trying to do was was attack the foundation of my spiritual house. 
who's trying to knock the legs out from under my spiritual energy and house. Okay? So they, they stopped him. Then all of a sudden, this black, big black cape came down over top of them. Over top of the guy and Ziggy and Addy. And there were actually some other guides in there too that I didn't recognize. But they were in the room. There were other people, energies, spirit guides. Um, and they, this big black cape came down over them and enveloped them. And that's interesting to me because as a kid, I, I was kind of afraid of Dracula. Remember Dracula would take his cape and put it over somebody and then bite their neck. Still gives me the creeps. So this big black cape enveloped them and I was like, what? And then I, I was just like kind of speechless for a minute. It came out of nowhere. And then Archangel Michael comes down. From, from above my house at an angle, straight to the black cape, takes his sword and slices the black cape open. Now the cape is split open like this. And um, I, I can see, now I can see again, like when that black cape went over them, they disappeared. It was as if they were gone out of this existence. When the cape was split open, I could see them again but they were very small, like they had gone away somewhere. And they were coming back, like like they were being sucked into another dimension. And, and now that the cape was split open, they were coming back to my awareness or, or my dimension. Um, so then, the I knew, and I knew this telepathically, consciously, that something was happening to the cape. The edges of it were unraveling. And, and it was like smoke was going back to its owner. So if you think about somebody throwing the cape, you know, metaphysically throwing it through time ex in existence into my existence, it, it was now going back like a boomerang. It was going back to the owner. So um, Archangel Michael knew that, that, that was going to go back to the owner, so he wanted to follow it. Now, meanwhile, Annie and, and Ziggy and the others took that man away. He was They were able to take him away out of my awareness. My awareness went with Archangel Michael because I wanted to see who was responsible for this. So I just sort of followed the Archangel Michael behind him in my awareness. Well... We got to, um, this is the abridged version, right? We, we got to this guy. And I say we, but I mean, I was like, I was like way far back in the back trying to not be noticed, right? Um, Archangel Michael got to that guy. And then he, um, this guy was bad. This guy was really, the guy that was in my bedroom was a punk. You know what I mean? He was a jerk. Um, but this guy that was protecting him is bad. Like really, really, really powerful and really bad. And I don't remember how Archangel Michael subdued him. The, 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 the smoke and the cape turned into bats. Bats, not to malign bats, but it did. It turned into a bat back to the... Dracula thing, I think, um, and, um, and and came back to that guy, and Archangel Michael somehow subdued him. I don't, oh right, Archangel Michael, this is unusual. I mean, in my experience, Archangel Michael doesn't do this kind of work because he, he just hasn't in my experience, but I guess this is a new experience because Archangel Michael put this, this thing over this guy that was like a cube, um, we just got lucky. All the way around, we got lucky. We caught this guy in my bedroom. Um, he, he's a time traveler. The guy that was in my bedroom is a time traveler. He goes in between dimensions. And we just so happened to catch him in this dimension. And, and we were, it was really lucky. We, we, we really were lucky. And I say we, I was lucky. But really, it was Ziggy and them that were lucky that they, they got him. They, they laid a trap for him and they got him. And it's the same thing that happened with this other guy. 
who was really powerful. Archangel Michael happened to catch him in the act of sending this, um, you know, whatever it is, banishing cloth or thing to Ziggy. Um, so while he was working that energy of bringing that energy back to him, he was either not focused or not aware or something, or he felt, or, or really what they're telling me is, he, he is such a big energy, such a powerful energy, that he really didn't expect anybody to ever come for him. He never had to look behind his back. He, he was so big and so powerful. He never had fear of that. And that coupled with the fact that he was conjuring, he was, he was in the middle of working the energy, Archangel Michael was able to put this, it, it looks like a, a cube, they were colored, first of all, it was colored light. It was a blues and purples, but it was also had this iridescent sheen, sheen that it could change color, like an oil slick can change color, right? But it was blues and purples, and, it, and he put this cube, it was shaped like this, um, like, a, like, like the shape of a body. And, he, and Archangel Michael was able to put this cube over this guy. The cube was translucent. You could see through it, but it looked like, like fake ice or acrylic plastic. Like there were bulges in it. It was not smooth. And there was these colors in it. But it went over him. And he was trapped. For real. Like they trapped him. Now, I know this because I had another time jumper in another situation in my life about a year ago. Do the same thing. And Archangel Michael was able to trap him in our dimension. It's very hard. If they, if they flip out of the dimension, you can't catch them. You can't. It, but if you can catch them while they're in your dimension and hold them in this time reality space, then you can do something with them. So in this case, we actually had two wins. We had the guy that was in my bedroom and this other guy that was protecting him for whatever reason. So this guy's, this, this is all freaking true. It's all, I, I literally talked it into my phone. You can hear me yawning. It's like really, really, really true. I know it sounds crazy. You can call me crazy. I didn't care, but I'm sharing it with you because what I need to tell you in a minute is the whole reason why you're watching this video. So they, they trapped him. Now, what to do with him? That would, this is the thing you need to understand. This guy had, had been a human. He had a soul. He had a human soul. He had been a man incarnated on earth at some point. However he did this, I don't know. He became extremely powerful to the degree that they, they told me he could create worlds. Okay, he was extremely powerful. Now, when I say he can create worlds, I don't mean good worlds. <laughs> I don't mean like places you want to go, but, but he could create, he had creator energy. He could create things. He could create those bats, right? Um, so, spirit needed, he, he was a bad man. He was like on the, on the top 10 wanted spirit FBI list, right? So they've got him trapped. Now what to do with him? This is the important part. This is, this is the important part of the whole thing. I being a human, I'm like, well, punish him, lock him up so he can never do this again. You know, take him out of commission basically is what I said. So, so the options were, that, that he could, that, that his soul could be rehabilitated and then allowed to re, be recreated, be put in another body, okay? The other option is that his soul could be destroyed. Now, I've heard people say that sometimes they destroy souls that are too evil. But I got to tell you, what I witnessed was very different than that. And here's what I witnessed. What I witnessed is um, a, basically a courtroom. On one side, you had the prosecutor saying, this soul is not redeemable. It's not redeemable. It's, he's too evil. On the other side, they were saying, all souls are light. All souls are life. 
all souls are redeemable. On the other side, no. No. The scales have been tipped too far. Humanity is at a precipice. The scales have tipped too far. We must take him out so that we can equalize the scales. This is a dire situation in a dire timeline on earth. We need to deal with him. The other side. Aren't, I should have puppets. Aren't all souls worth saving? Are we not as dark as him if we were to actually annihilate and, and destroy a soul? Is that what we want? Right? So I'm listening to this, this argument and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we can't just destroy souls. All souls are redeemable. Yes, I agree. Because we have free will. This guy could come back in a body and actually choose something different. So then the prosecutor said, showed me this picture of, of a soul. Okay, so let's say it, it's a, a ball of light. Um, and in his case... It's a very dim light. And let's say they, they try to redeem it. But what they mean by that is they can't change the essence of his soul. They can't. Because it's been damaged. It's been lowered. His vibration has been lowered. Now what they can do is change the essence of his energy body around the light of the soul. Right? So you can imagine like when we get incarnated on earth, you I've heard people say, and even myself, like, boy, I must have been a bad person in this previous life because of X. Because I experience maybe maybe in this life you have a really hot temper, but you've learned to to tame it. You know what I mean? So maybe in your previous life life, that hot temper got you in trouble and you actually committed murder. But in this life, the same hot temper, you've learned to curtail it. You've learned to work with it, right? So that's what they're saying is we can change the outside of the energy body so that the essence of the soul, when it sends the desire out of the, of the, of the soul, it sends the desire out, it has to go through these layers of energy that they have changed. So hopefully, in that way, when the soul sends the desire out, it's mitigated by these energy layers. Now, it might not be, but the hope is that it is mitigated, that it is changed. And that's the risk. That's the risk they're talking about. On one side, they're saying we can't take this risk. This guy really, really is bad. I mean, he's not just... Jack the Ripper bad. He might not even be Hitler bad. He may be five times Hitler bad. Right? So where do we say enough is enough? Where do we say there is no redemption? And on the other side, they were saying there's always redemption. So you might understand that that might be Jesus' message of turn the other cheek of there's always redemption. There's always light. There's always hope. So the defenders were saying, if you say that there's no redemption, you're saying there's no hope. If there's no hope, there's no light. And if there's no hope and no light, what is humanity? What's the, what's the reason for being here if we can't have another chance, right? But the prosecutors were saying, yeah, that's all well and good, but this is not, this time on earth is fraught with peril. Earth is on a precipice. We just can't, this is irresponsible to allow a soul like this to continue to incarnate is irresponsible. Given this very peril, you know, time on earth so I'm in the middle and you can hear it on the recording I'm in the middle going oh my god oh my god I I like I'm starting to feel 
like we need to give him another chance, right? I really was. Now in the middle, you have the you know the defenders and the prosecutors, and in the middle is you know what and what the freaking Matrix. And I still have never seen that movie, and they talk about it not infrequently. They talk about the Matrix all the time, and I've not ever seen the movie. But this Matrix is a computer, and to what they're showing me anyway, it's a computer, and and the Matrix is you write the software and it runs the software. It doesn't have emotion. Obviously, these two entities, these two energy groups had emotion. Whoever won the ruling, the matrix was gonna carry out whatever the ruling was. If the ruling is that this soul has to be, you know, disintegrated, destroyed, then the matrix was gonna do that. It wasn't thinking, it wasn't feeling, it, it just does whatever it's asked to do. So, after a lot of back and forth, I got, I knew the impression was that this soul was going to be destroyed. And the, the energies that were arguing for it not to be destroyed, the grief and the sadness, it's, it's almost actually as if the whole universe got quiet. I mean, the multiverse got quiet because when you extinguish life forever and ever and ever more, that's a heavy thing. That's not something that happens very often. And I mean like hardly ever. But that was the ruling that came down. So the next thing that happened is that it was decided that they would allow this man to have some sort of last words. I mean, now this whole time he's not been able to argue on his own behalf. But I would wager to say that these people really argued well on his behalf. Now, it wasn't on his behalf. It was on his soul's behalf, right? Remember that. It's not about him. It's about his soul. So they decided that they needed to create a way for him to talk, like, like to remove this um, um, cube. And so at first, my human mind, I thought, they were talking about melting the cube or dissolving it. In my mind, I thought, oh, well, they're going to start at the top and then melt it down so that it comes like to here. I knew they weren't going to let him out, you know, but so that he could talk, right? But then they told me, no, I mean, we're not going to expose this crown chakra. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, come on, Susan. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, you're not going to do that because we wouldn't want this exposed, right? But what happened next blew my mind, and I actually had to say the F word twice. So they, they melted it down so that it came down and it started coming down his face. Okay, so like it, it was just like an oval outline around his face. And um, it came down to his mouth when his mouth got to his mouth so he could speak. And this is where I had to throw F-bombs. He started doing incantations. Still gives me the creeps. He started doing incantations. Spells damning all of life all of us and i was like freaking out because i'm like this dude is gonna kill us all i mean this literally i freaked out but of course they were prepared for that they they're not no dummies this ain't their first rodeo even though this doesn't happen very often they they knew they brought their a-game um and they they had this thing so words have power i mean words are power that's why you always have to be careful what you say to yourself in your mind and also to other people words are extraordinarily powerful just with him speaking the words not using his crown chakra or anything just with him speaking the words they were powerful and so they were coming out of his mouth as energy and and they and they it was like a like a bubble 
not like a whole continuous bubble, but it was like energy, okay? That's all I can tell you. And I guess what I want to describe is it wasn't dispersed. It was, it was together. It was hanging together in globs. So it was coming out of its mouth in globs. And about the time that I was freaking out, they took this big bag. Um, it's all of a sudden, somebody's there with this bag. And they basically caught his words, sealed them up in the bag, and then sealed his face back in there. <laughs> it's like, that's enough out of you, man. You know, they, they knew. They knew this guy was going to do this. He wasn't going to go down without a fight. He had absolutely no um, remorse. He had no remorse. His last act was to damn us all, is what I kept hearing. Um, so they captured those words um, and did whatever they did with them. And then they sealed him back up again. And then they took him to the, um, in basically like an incinerator. Um, this is kind of rough. The imagery was rough. Um, they took him to a thing that would destroy his soul. Um, and as I told you, um, everybody was extremely sad. And then the angels came down. Why did the angels come down? Then these angels came. Oh, right. That's right. I'm sorry. I think I got this out of order. As they were taking him to, as he was, right, they gave him a chance to, not that it was going to save him, but it, but it was his last rights, his last chance. And, and so he messed that up. So after that, it we knew he was going to be destroyed. And so the next thing that happened was I saw these angels and they were little angels and then big angels. And then Archangel Gabriel came. Archangel Gabriel, and I'm not religious, I mean, if this is the first time you're watching this, but but this all, all of this is in our energy, whether you're religious or not. It is true. It's I'm not Catholic. I'm not religious, but this I've had personal experience with this stuff. Archangel Gabriel has a horn. Um, and he often will, will blow the horn when a soul is crossing. I personally had that experience about a week before my father crossed. I knew he was very sick and he was on hospice, so that wasn't a surprise. But I heard, because I'm clairaudient, I heard, Archang I heard Archangel Gabriel blow his horn. And at the same time, because I didn't know what that was, they told me claircognitively, clear, you know, through my, my thinking psychic ability, it's Archangel Gabriel blowing his horn. Archangel Gabriel came again with his horn to announce the passing and the ultimate passing. And what happened was the horn, whereas Archangel Gabriel has just a normal, like a horn, um, like a like an instrument, right? It's, it's not like a, a animal tusk. It's like a, an instrument. Um, the the bell or the the opening of the horn got so big that it enveloped all of us it's it literally blotted all of us out all, all, me little me but also all of them um and they told me that what was happening was that was to show that the horn could be heard it was an announcement. It was it was heard throughout the multiverse. Throughout all of existence. This was this was a big thing. This was a big thing that was happening and it needed to be communicated to all that exists in every dimension. So once that happened the horn came back down and got smaller. And then I saw him be moved in his cube. It was sort of like neon, neon looking. Um, and I saw him moved and then I saw him um, go into the matrix machine that um, basically took his soul out of commission forever. So I was asking them why what is the lesson here? Why was I to experience all of this, right? When things happen, 
ask what your lesson is. You know, try to get as much from the experience as you can. Don't just experience it and go, one, what, why, what that happen? Or don't just push it off and don't think about it. Try to get your lesson, right? So that's when they told me some things. Like, for instance, when the guy was in the front of the house and he kicked, I was like, why is he kicking out my foundation? You know what I mean? Like, I do have a couple of piers on the foundation that need to be straightened. And I was like, God, he's trying to mess up my house. Me thinking with my ego mind in my physical world. No, he was trying to kick the legs out from under my spiritual foundation. And that leads me to, to something else. Two things. First of all, this guy, why, would this, why was this guy in my energy talking to me bad things about my dog? Well, because he knew that was going to upset me. And he knew that I couldn't catch him. And he knew that was going to upset me. And then he knew that if he kept doing that, I wouldn't feel comfortable with my spiritual abilities. Right? Because when you're experiencing sort of this, you know, scary thing, um, all of a sudden you don't want to meditate. All of a sudden you don't want to speak to your spirit guides because you're afraid that opening that door might bring him in. Right? And I, I just went through this for the whole summer with another situation, but it was the same thing. Spiritual hecklers. My friend Susanna calls it spiritual hecklers. You know, he wasn't hurting me. He was just effing with my mind and making me fearful. Well, had I not been through this whole thing this last summer, I would have been fearful, but I was just mad. You know, I was like, get out, mad. But if you don't know that they're, that, that they can't hurt you, it can make you close down your abilities. And what does that do? That takes you as a light worker offline. You're offline now. You're not meditating. Maybe you're not even using your abilities anymore. And that's good for them. Because the more of us there are that are using our abilities, that are connect, connecting with spirit, that are connecting with our guides and our angels and with all that is God, the creator, whatever you want to call it, the more power we have. The more power we have to bring light to this planet and really to the universe because we're emitting light. We're like little light bulbs walking around emitting light. But when we get scared and fearful, we close down our light. And if we close down our light, we're not emitting light anymore. So then we're not really helping anybody in some in that way. Just by meditating, just by being an open heart and a, having a beautiful, you know, loving energy emanating from you helps everybody you come into contact with. And it certainly sends beautiful, happy energy to your house, your family, your neighbors, the world. They don't want that. They want us to stay fearful. We are having a huge awakening right now on this planet. So many of you are coming online, lighting up. And that is not what they want. They don't want that. They want us in fear mode. They don't want us to know how powerful we really are and how much love and light we can really send and share. So, they heckle us. They mess with us. So, that's why, that was my lesson. So, when he kicked out at my foundation, he was kicking out at my spiritual foundation. Not, it was a metaphor. It wasn't my foundation of my house, my physical house. It's my spiritual house trying to hurt me in that way right and then secondly you can't underestimate or gloss over what happened with this soul and the fact that even damaged souls always get a chance always get a chance at redemption another chance back to light. That was 
hugely powerful for me to witness this sort of courtroom where they talked about this person's soul and whether it was salvageable or not. And I want to say that this guy, obviously, you know, they're never going to say that about you or me. That We're not that powerful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even really, I'm not even sure that they extinguished Hitler's soul. I'm really not sure about it. I think he's in holding somewhere. I don't think he's been reincarnated. I think many of his underlings who were just as evil have been reincarnated. For sure. Did I get another chance? That's what it's all about is giving people another chance. Right? Because you might choose differently this time. You might choose light. And that's, that's ascension. That's what we're doing now. We're ascending. Right? So maybe these people that are leaving the earth that are lower vibration... This is why they're going, because we're choosing light. And they can't, they're not in resonance with that, right? Maybe they're, they're stepping out so they can turn around and come back in as fast as they can so they can get on that train, get on that light train, right? But I would just say for you, if you're watching this video and you feel like this has happened to me, right? I've had things happen that I don't want to meditate now. And, I've, I'm scared of whatever. Stand in your power. Call for help. Right? Um, know that you are light. Stand in the light. Raise your vibration. Raise your vibration. Don't let them win. Because light is the way. That's the way. That's what we all are here. And we always choose light. This was a one-off. This was a one-off thing. This guy was too big. He was too powerful. And we're at two of a fragile place on our planet um, for him to get another chance. Um, but anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Um, I hope it's been helpful, honestly. Um, and again, please subscribe to my channel if you like. That helps me as well. Um, YouTube likes it when you have subscribers. <laughs> and it's free, so that's nice. Uh, like the video if you liked it. And um, also, um, I was going to say something else, but they were talking to me. What are they talking about? Um, self-care. Okay, the thing that you can do, the, the message they want to talk to you about right now is self-care. Um it's really important, even if you're taking care of other people or even if you're, you don't have money. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what your situation is. Self-care can be simply um, taking a walk in the neighborhood, right? Um, it could be reading a book. Taking the time for yourself is self-care. I'm taking an hour to go walk outside. I'm taking an hour to go get a manicure, a pedicure, a haircut. Um, a massage. Look and see if you have a massage school in your area. They often give away free massages. You know, there's lots of ways to get self-care. Okay, so they want to talk about that. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Know you're protected. Know you're loved. This was just an, a weird thing that happened to me that happened to this guy because he got to be too powerful and too dark. And, and he wasn't, um, it was deemed that he was not salvageable. And that's a, a very unique, unusual thing. It's not something that happens very, very often at all. Like, I don't know, I think I said five in a trillion. So um, it's an unusual thing that happens. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Again, um, I have a Patreon channel. You can check it out in the uh, description. It's a membership, so you'll get to see videos different than I do here on YouTube. I'll always do videos on YouTube. I'm not abandoning anybody. I'm always going to be giving you free content. Um, and also, uh, join us in New Orleans. Jen's World, Tarot, and I will be in New Orleans. We are having a workshop on Saturday and Sunday, the 11th and 12th of December. You can see more information at jensworldtarot.com. 
And um, thanks so much, everybody. You guys take care. I really appreciate you watching and hanging out with me. All the best.